Hey gang, and welcome back for another video here on Joe Chem. Okay gang, we are super close to finishing out the Alkanes series. And if you've gone through the series chronologically, you just finished up learning about free radical halogenation, both with chlorine and bromine. And this is a good time to talk about what is known as Hammond's postulate. Remember in those free radical chlorination and bromination videos, we saw chlorine and bromine kind of have selectivity differences and it ultimately came down to, you know, chlorination being very exothermic, whereas bromination was actually had one endothermic step in its reaction. So what is Hammond's postulate and why do we care? I promise you it's not that bad and it fits in perfectly with what you just learned. So what does Hammond's postulate state? Well, I have two energy diagrams up here and this will help us explain what Hammond's postulate is all about. So look at this energy diagram on the left right here. If you can see, you remember on energy diagrams, as we go up an energy diagram in the y-axis, that means we have more energy. More energy means more unstable, right? Energy like, or nature likes to give off energy and ideally go down in energy. Down means stable. So if we take a look here, we start from a high point of energy, we have an activation energy up here, we see a transition state, and then we fall all the way down here. We see that this could be our delta H, our heat of reaction, right? Our, our enthalpy, okay? So what's important to note, and here's like the new stuff here, and this is what Hammond's postulate states. When you have exothermic reactions, they are favorable, they happen fast. They get going, they do not wait around. So if you are inspecting the transition state, which is up here, if you wanted to look, take a snapshot at that point in time to see what the transition state looks like, because exothermic reactions happen quickly because they're favorable, the transition state resembles more like the makeup of your reactants. So what that means is since it's happening so quickly, obviously in a transition state, bonds are breaking and forming, but things get going so quickly, you look more like the reactants you start with than the products you end up as, okay? Now, and obviously that means, you know, your delta H is below zero, it's negative. Now let's look over here. This is an energy diagram that is endothermic, meaning we go from low energy and this reaction is actually going to not, this gives off energy, this is actually going to absorb or consume energy. So we go from a point of low energy to high energy. Now remember, to make something like this work, you're usually gonna have to put energy into your system unless that the energy can come from somewhere else, right? Like our delta H right here looks like this. And remember, it's always final minus initial, so this is a bigger value than this. So this, this is negative over here, this is positive over here. This is a favorable reaction. This is kind of unfavorable. It takes energy, right? So if we take a look here, right, we see that the, whereas the energy, the transition state happens really close to right here, the reactants, you can see the opposite is true here. The transition state's closer to the products, right? So whereas Hammond's postulate says, you know, exothermic reactions have early transition states and look like reactants, the opposite is true for endothermic reactions. They take a little bit more time to get to the transition state, to fully start you know, breaking and forming bonds. So if you inspect the transition state over here, Hammond's postulate states you will have a late transition state, meaning you're closer to the finish of your reaction and you will look more like products. I know I kind of really stated things multiple times, but that's all Hammond's postulate is. Exothermic reactions have early transition states and resemble the reactants they came from, whereas and endothermic reactions, they take a little bit longer to get going since they absorb energy, they require energy. So your transition state is late and you look more like your products. What I wanna do is I wanna erase this. I wanna show just one example reaction to just kind of illustrate and put this into more concrete terms like, you know, let's examine a reaction you know, and, and go into it. Then I wanna also bring it back full circle to the free radical chain reaction. So hold on, stick with me. I'm going to erase this and we'll have a bit more fun. Okay, gang, we have kind of this example and one more and then the video will be over. But to really put Hammond's postulate in a more concrete form for 
all of you. What I want to sh do is, given this reaction up here with NH2 minus being, you know, coming into contact with H2SO4, a very strong base and a strong acid, we see that this acid base reaction results in a proton transfer from H2SO4 to NH2 minus to form the conjugate base of H2SO4 and NH3 or ammonia. Given information here is that the reaction is exothermic. And what we are tasked with doing is draw an energy diagram that accurately depicts the transition state, okay? And you know, an accurate energy diagram and let's depict the transition state. So the nice thing is, is we know this is exothermic. So what we know is, you know, our delta H, do this, our delta H is less than zero, it'll be negative. That's a negative sign in quotations. So I will start with more energy than I will end with because we know delta H is final minus initial, so I'll have a smaller enthalpy than when I started. Now, the real question is, remember, now we, rem now we know of Hammond's postulate. This is a exothermic reaction. So that means we will have an early transition state. This is favorable, it's gonna go fast, which means we kind of reach the transition state very quickly and then come down like this. So it's very key that we have an early, I'll just put trans state. Now, the other thing I wanna do here is I wanna actually kind of show you what that looks like. In this reaction, if I wanna draw the arrows, what we have going on here is a hydrogen off of one of the oxygens in sulfuric acid. One of the protons, this nitrogen comes over and grabs it an NH bond forms, and then this OH bond breaks, okay? So it's these two bonds that are forming and breaking. So we can now illustrate using distance that we can kind of show the transition state and show that it resembles more like the reactants because it's an early transition state. We are closer to where we started. And here's how we can do that. I can show this nitrogen, I will show that this bond forming, the NH bond, is longer than the OH bond that is breaking. So the reason why this accu accurately shows that we are more like our reactants is because in the product, this NH bond is made, it exists. So to show that it's forming, but it's not very close, we make this distance longer than the other bond that is breaking. We make that shorter. So if you make something longer, that means like it's not closer to happening. And if something is shorter, that means it's closer to being in that form. So this, what this illustrates is that we look more like NH2 and H2SO4 than we do if we had this which would look more like, this is more like reactants. And this down here would look more like products. So we do not look like this and we do look like this. Okay, that's how someone can maybe ask you to sh demonstrate your knowledge of Hammond's postulate. Maybe you draw an energy diagram. Maybe you show them what a transition state looks like. But now I wanna show you, I wanna wrap this to finish out the video. I wanna wrap this back to the free radical halogenation because I didn't put that in this video. I thought it would fit well in this one. So let me clean things up. We'll be right back. Okay, gang, to finish out Hammond's postulate, I want to, I know we just did a concrete example with an acid base reaction, but I wanna bring this full circle and show you Hammond's postulate as it relates to the free radical halogenation because we learn two reactions that seemingly sound so, you know, they're so, they look so familiar, and, or familiar and uh, similar rather, where you either just use chlorine or bromine. But remember, bromine's weirdly selective and it came down to its thermodynamics because propagation one was actually an endothermic step. So obviously, Hammond's postulate will show us that 
because of the thermodynamics of each reaction, the transition states they go through look different. So what I did is I took propagation one. Basically, I took the above, you know, the reactions like this. So if we take ethane and we treat it with Cl2 and light, we would get this. And if we did the same with Br2, remember Br2, light, and heat, because bromine isn't as exothermic as the chlorination reaction, we get this as well. So what I did was I stole one of the steps from the mechanism, and please be very familiar with that mechanism. Know it like the back of your hand. What I'm showing you here is propagation one for both reactions. Remember, after initiation, we have a either chlorine or bromine radical, and that radical finds the organic piece of your reaction, and it will find a CH bond. The radical, you know, chlorine or bromine, picks off or abstracts one of the hydrogens. This hydrogen will take an electron and link up with this chlorine or bromine's radical electron, and that leaves the other electron in this bond, because remember, we have to show where all electrons go when we break bonds. Needs to, uh, it will find a home on a carbon, so we get a carbon radical, and we get either HCl or HBr. So the key thing here, the given information, right, is that chlorination is exothermic. Bromination is endothermic. So now that we know Hammond's postulate, if we need to draw energy diagrams for this individual step, for propagation one, we can do that and we know what kind of ramifications that will have on each reaction's transition state. So to do it for chlorination, this is exothermic. So what I'm gonna do is remember, I start high and I go low because for chlorination being exothermic, our delta H is less than zero, which means final is lower than initial. We give off energy as we go from the beginning to the end. And that means we'll have an early transition state because of the fact that it's exothermic, it happens quickly, your bonds forming and breaking, you get to the transition state very fast, so you are closer to the beginning of the reaction, aka the transition state looks more like reactants. However, remember, we know the opposite to be true for endothermic reactions, which is what bromination propagation one is. We start low and we end higher. This reaction requires energy. Our delta H is greater than zero because final minus initial gives you a positive number. As a result, remember, this takes a little bit more time. As a result, you do not get to the transition state quickly, but you get to it towards the end of your reaction. So your transition state looks more like products than reactants. To show you what that might look like, let me erase this. To draw the transition states, I know that in this uh, chlorination, we do this in red, my CH bond is breaking, this bond right here. So, since I look more like reactants, I will have a C dotted line to an H, because this bond looks more like this, and then I will have a longer bond to chlorine. Because I look more like reactants, so I want to look more like the individual chlorine radical. So this line is longer because the HCl has not yet formed. And I want to look more like the CH bond exists. However, the flip side is the case for the bromination. This CH bond is a lot longer because I look more like products because I have a late transition state. And this bond to Br is a heck of a lot shorter because remember in the products we have HBr and the radical. So this illustrates this bond is near, like nearly broken um, or sorry, this bond is not close to existing. That's why it's longer. This bond is super close to existing because the distance is shorter. Gang, if you were confused about Hammond's postulate, I really hope this clears things up. I know I was, was one of those topics where I thought I knew what I was talking about and then I found out I really didn't. So I'm hoping this cleared up any confusion if you had it. If you're watching me from YouTube, hey, welcome to Geochem. Happy you're here. Consider liking, commenting, subscribing, and if you're looking for practice to go along with all these videos, head over to my website, jokem.io, where you can see these same lovely videos paired with worksheets that I've created out of love and 
uh, with accompanying PDF solutions that I've written. They're all free. There's even videos where I go through the worksheets. Those are free and study guides to boot. If you're watching me on Joe Chem, you're a real one. Thanks for being a Joe Chemist. And no matter what, I hope to see you all in the next video.